Hi guys, welcome! In a previous episode of my Preparing for Soulbinder series, we've discussed the unique characteristics of the Soulbinder class and gave an overview of their builds. This time we'll take a closer look at the DPS build for Soulbinder, which is more of a burst type ghost magic build. This is the second episode of this series wherein we'll discuss the stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips that can help you prepare before the new episode arrives. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, let's discuss the important stats for this build. Prioritize maxing out int since it is a stat that primarily increases magic attack. Hence, it will be the foundation for increasing your DPS. Next, you also need to have high luck since soul binders have three core skills which are affected by this stat. First is the mind penetration passive skill which adds true damage to your attack skills for each point of luck. Second is the Esma Attack skill, which deals 1% more damage for every 5 luck or 3 luck if the third line of the class S star rune is activated. And third is the Soul Whisper passive skill, which restores the HP of all teammates carrying a soul based on int and luck whenever you use a skill. In addition, luck is also needed for the spell crit build, wherein every 6 luck increases spell crit damage by 1%. Do take note that spell crit is different from normal auto attack crit, thus crit, crit damage, crit rest, and crit death stats do not affect spell crit. Next, a lot sufficient points on decks for reducing the variable cast time of skills. Every 30 decks reduces VCT by 1 second. For PvE, the 6 second VCT of S stun is the highest, while for PvP, the 8 second VCT of Soul Judgment is the highest. As for your remaining points, you can allocate it on VIT for survivability. The increase in max HP will also boost the recovery rate from the Kaina passive skill. Other stats that are significant for increasing your DPS are Magic Damage, Magic Penetration, Skill Damage, Ignore MDef, Spell Crit, as well as Damage to Race and Size modifiers. Normally, damage to small, medium, and large size modifiers do not affect Magic Damage. But with the weight of the soul passive skill, the magic damage skills of soul binders will additionally calculate your size damage bonus and the enemy's size damage reduction. Another important thing to note is that several skills of soul binders have fixed cast time and long cooldowns which can become bothersome in battle. Thus, using items and buffs that can reduce VCT, FCT, cooldown, and skill delay will be beneficial in improving their ease of use. Up next, let's discuss the most important skills for this build. First, for the Soul Binder second drop skill tree, prioritize putting points on the following skills. First, get Warm Wind for converting the element of your attack into one of Wind, Earth, Water, Fire, Holy Dark, or Ghost for 5 minutes. Converting the Ghost element would be the top choice since you have buffs that boost Ghost damage. Converting to Wind, Earth, Water, or Fire element will still be good if you have Elemental Advantage since there's an AC rune that enhances the damage of these four elements by 21%. Second is Soul Gathering, which is an essential buff that increases Ghost Element damage by 20% or up to 30% with AC rune, Luck by 50 points, and Magic Damage by 20% for 2 minutes. It has a 2 second fixed cast time, which can be reduced to 1.4 seconds with this AC rune. So even with Dark Illusion Star card, it will still take 0.9 seconds to cast Soul Gathering. A good solution for this is to have a support Soul Binder in the party to give you the Ninja Soul buff, which removes fixed cast time by 100% and boosts MPEN by 30% for 35 seconds. Next, we have Soul Shock, which is a single target attack skill that deals ghost magic damage to the target and up to 5 nearby enemies. Its damage increases the more enemies in range. If you're just starting out, then you may use Soul Shock for farming since it has long range, short cooldown, and low SP cost with the help of these drones. But for PvP and PvE instances, I don't think it will be quite useful since it has low magic attack multiplier compared to other attack skills. Hence, just leave Soul Shock level 2 as prerequisite to get the next skill. Next, we have Mind Penetration, which we've explained beforehand as one of the reasons why luck is needed for this build. This passive adds 200 true damage to your attack skills for each point of luck, and there are easier runes that can further boost its effect on your final damage. 
Another vital skill is Priest Soul, which is a 10 second debuff that applies Lex Aeterna on the enemy every 2 seconds. This will cause the target to take 100% more damage from the next attack so it's useful for dealing burst damage. In PvP, it can also reduce the enemy's SP by 600 points every 2 seconds due to this AC rune. Then we have s Wu, which is a debuff that converts an enemy to small size for 8 seconds. This will cause the target to have a movement speed limit of 100% and even reduce their movement speed by 50% and attack and magic attack by 20% with these AC ruins. This debuff will be a good counter against Novus Guardian since their damage scales with movement speed. After that, get Soul Walker, which is a utility buff that increases your movement speed by 50% to up to 80%, grants immunity to physical damage, and reduces magic damage received by up to 30% for 5 seconds together with this class S rune. Just keep in mind that it consumes all SP when used. Thus, it's a must to activate the third line effect of the class S rune which restores all SP after 1 second. Next, put points on Kaina which passively restores your HP and SP. The recovery rate is 10% of your max HP and max SP every second when sitting down or playing dead or 38% of your max HP and SP every 12 seconds when not resting. Its breakthrough will increase your max HP and SP by 10%. The amount restored is not affected by healing bonus stat. And lastly, get level 3 Kahi as prerequisite for the next skill. Up next for the Spirit Hunter 3rd job, the most important skills to get are as follows. First, we have the Soul Hunter passive skill, which increases the damage of your skills by 30% to a target enemy carrying a soul. Thus, enemies carrying Priest Soul will receive more damage. Then get Eske, which is a debuff that converts an enemy to large size for 10 to 13 seconds with this AC rune. This will increase the target's PDI by 20% or 10% with AC rune, but reduce their physical and magic damage reduction by 20% and physical attack by 15% with the related class A rune. Getting 3 seconds or higher in the first line for this rune will allow you to recast Eske once the debuff expires with zero downtime. Since Eske cannot be applied to boss monsters, you can just leave it at level 3 for PvE as prerequisite for the next skill. Next we have Estun, which is a primary damaging skill for the third job. It is a single target attack skill that deals neutral magic damage whose element can be changed using the Warm Wind skill. If the target is medium size, it inflicts stun for 3 seconds and reduces their M death by 20% for 5 seconds with AC rune. It has high magic attack multiplier and low cooldown, so it's a good damage and CC skill in PvP. After that, get level 1 Weight of the Soul, which allows the attack skills of Soul Binder to additionally calculate your size damage bonus and the enemy's size damage reduction. And with the third line effect of this class S rune, the damage calculation will ignore the enemy's size damage reduction stat. This opens up the usage of Minora's card and Drake's star card for increasing damage against most MVPs or players affected by SK. For PvP, you may set it to level 6 for additional 15% medium size damage reduction. Next is Soul Hunting Ritual, which is a party buff that boosts you and your teammates' damage to large size by 10% to 18% with AC rune, damage to small size by 12%, and damage to demi-human, brute, fish, and dragon race by 10%. This class A rune can reduce the skill's FCT from 1 second to 0.5 seconds and increase its duration from 60 to 80 seconds. Then we have the Kope passive skill for survivability. With these runes activated, Kope will boost your flea by 50 to 70, chance to dodge magic damage by 15%, and crit rest by up to 10. In addition, if you successfully dodge an attack, you will recover 20% of your loss HP. Lastly, there's an option to get the Soul Whisper passive skill, which reduces VCT by 10% to 20% with runes and heals all allies carrying a soul whenever you use a skill. The amount of HP restored is based on your int and luck and it can increase by up to 38% with these runes. Once you've changed into the Twin Demons 4 job, you can prioritize allocating your time quicksand on the following skills. First is Clairvoyance, which is a buff that considers all enemy targets as ghost element and also lets you see hidden enemies. It lasts for 12 seconds or up to 18 seconds with this enhancement skill. 
This will be valuable for bursting down enemies since Ghost Element skills deal twice more damage against Ghost targets. Although it has a long cooldown, it can be reduced. Next get Esma, which is the primary burst damage skill for Twin Demons. It can only be casted within 5 seconds after casting an S skill, so you need to cast Eske, Eswu, or Essen first before finishing the target with Esma. Its damage is based on Essen, so all damage modifiers for Essen will also impact the damage of Esma. However, it doesn't inherit Essen's debuff to medium size. Having high luck also affects its damage, wherein every 5 luck will increase its damage by 1%. And with the third line of this star rune activated, the requirement will be reduced from 5 to 3 luck. So if you got 300 luck, you'll have 100% additional damage multiplier for Esma. Furthermore, this skill can have additional effects depending on the size of the target due to these enhancement skills and star rune. If the target is converted to large size with Eske, Esma can have 30 to 60% additional damage multiplier. If the target is converted to small size with Eswu, Esma can forbid them from attacking for 3 to 6 seconds. And then we have Eswu, which is your primary AoE damage skill. It lasts for 3 seconds and deals AoE neutral damage per second to all enemies within a 4 meter radius. Similar to other S skills, its element can be converted by Warm Wind. It deals good damage especially with the ghost element buffs so it will be really useful in large scale battles such as in GVG, Oracle, and Echoing Corridor. The other skills of Soulbinders are designed for granting buffs to allies and debuffs to enemies and we'll discuss them in the next episode of this series so stay tuned for that. Lastly, we have several important skills which can only be obtained from runes. First is Nihility, which can be obtained from Acer Monument Runes. It is a debuff which forbids an enemy from doing auto-attacks and reduces his M death by 100% for 8 seconds. So in PvP, it's a good counter against AA Rune Masters and SP Stellar Hunters. While in PvE, you can use this to reduce the MVP's M death before bursting down with Estan and Esma. And second is Sage's Soul, which can be obtained from the Magic Nemesis Class S rune. This is a buff skill that grants the effect of Earth Field to yourself for 5 to 10 seconds, preventing ground AoE skills and increasing the chance to dodge magic damage by 1% to 20%. If the third line effect is activated, it also applies Remove Buff to yourself, which removes all debuffs and grants immunity to debuff effects. This is the only soul skill which can be applied to self, so it will synergize with other soul passive skills. Up next, let's discuss the most important runes to get. For Acer Monument, here's a summary of the runes that you should prioritize for increasing damage and improving skill utilization. If you have extra gold medals and contribution, just activate the nodes which will improve your survivability. For advanced runes, these are the ones that you should prioritize. First is the Invisible and Formless Class S rune with a third line effect and high value for the first line as it will significantly boost the firepower of Soulbinder. Second is the Multi-Effect Esma Class S star rune with a third line effect and high value for the first line for boosting Esma damage. Third we have the Hunting Knight Class A rune with high values on both lines to cast Soul Hunting Ritual faster and to prolong the duration of its effect. Fourth is a Magic Nemesis Class S rune for unlocking the Sage's Soul skill which we've already discussed earlier. And fifth, we have the Other Sidewalker Class S rune with third line effect to restore all SP after casting Soul Walker. Having high values on the first and second lines will help in mobility and survival. As for the last rune slot, you can choose depending on your playstyle and preference. As for the attribute runes, prioritize upgrading the following to increase your damage. You may also use the Dex and Chant buff runes if you still need variable cast time reduction. Up next, let's dive into the suggested equipment set and cards. For weapon, the most viable will be the new Soulbinder exclusive Myriad Soul Staff as it grants huge increase in magic attack, int, luck, ghost damage, ignore mdef, magic damage, and damage to large sized targets. The difference between plus 10 and plus 15 is additional 10% magic attack and 8% magic damage, so it's a must to refine it to plus 15. For weapon enchantment, aim for a high value for these stats and magic for 4th enchant. 
for weapon cards is cheaper and more efficient to use damage to race, size, or MVP modifier cards and just switch depending on your target's attributes. You may also use the Shell Chapet card for boosting spell crit chance. If you have high budget, then you may opt to use any of the following MVP cards. For offhand, there's a variety of options depending on the stat you're lacking. Usually, it's difficult to stack Ignore MDef when just starting out, so you can use either Creeper Agreement or Devil Skull to achieve your target Ignore MDef. But if you already got high Ignore MDef from other sources even without these two offhand gears, then you have an option to switch to Peak Platter, Other Shore Web, or Wisdom Totem. For offhand enchantment, aim for high value for these stats and insight for fourth enchant. For offhand cards, just use any of the following. I don't recommend using the Wicked Sunflower Star card since Soulbinders cast single target skills like Estun and Esma more frequently than Eshu. For armor, I recommend using Star Shatter's Gown or Devil's Battle Suit as they provide a more balanced stat distribution for percent magic attack, ignore MDef, and MPen. But if you want to stack more magic damage, then you may opt to use the Wisdom Sacrificial Garb. For armor enchantment, aim for a high value for these stats and magic for fourth enchant. For armor cards, you may use any of the following cards, the most suitable of which is the Munak Star card for more ignore MDef. For a garment, I recommend using either the Divine Feather Clothes or Classic Robe. It's better to use the Ancient Equipment if you get the max random stat since it gives higher ignore MDef and skill damage than the regular equipment. In addition, VCT reduction and percent magic attack can easily be obtained from other sources. For garment enchantment, aim for a high value for these stats and arcane for fourth enchant. For garment cards, you may use any of the following cards, with Harpy Star card being the best in slot. In the next episode, there will be a chance to get the Devil Squid card from Combined Fate. Using it will allow you to attack while hiding without being discovered. For footgear, I think Lawful Boots with max random stat would be the best option as it grants both percent magic attack and MPen. But if you prefer to stack magic attack or magic damage, then you may opt to use White Gem Boots for magic attack or Glorious Boots for magic damage. If you want more flexibility when switching between physical and magic multi jobs, just get St. Mary's Cloth Shoes or Balanced Boots as they increase both physical and magic damage. For footgear enchantment, aim for a high value for these stats and arcane for fourth enchant. For footgear cards, you may use any of the following cards. Marionette Star card is a good and inexpensive option since there's only a few sources of ghost damage modifier. For accessory, there's plenty of options for increasing percent magic attack, ignore MDef, and MPen, so just choose depending on which stat you're lacking. Among these, the new Flower Hairpin Ancient Gear grants the highest boost in percent magic attack if you get the max random stat. It's not recommended to use Exorcism Sachet for boosting spell crit since you'll be sacrificing a lot of stats just for 10% spell crit chance, which will diminish your overall DPS. For enchantment, just aim for a high value for these stats and anti mage for fourth enchant. For accessory cards, you may use any of the following cards. For headgears, there are a lot of options for both gacha and non-gacha, so just choose the ones that will boost the stats you are lacking. First, for boosting spell crit chance, we have the Wheel of Fortune 4-Leaf Clover and plus 6 in Comias movement. Usually getting at least 30-50% to spell crit chance is good enough to boost your damage without sacrificing a lot of stats. Next, you can boost ghost element damage with high refined evil hat and 5 strings. Next, we have the following headwear for boosting skill damage. The notable ones are Holy Knight Blessing, Norma the Unicorn, Winter Crown, Plus 10 Silent Sinking, Light Food, Haunted Candlestick, Beautiful Ensemble, and Panel Guardian. Next, for boosting MPen, there's also a lot of headwear options, but the notable ones are Bottled Star, Evil Eye, Meow Wave, Ceremony Spinning Sweet Dream, Clamor Cane, Raph Greasy Fallen Feather, and Peter Wendy. Next, we have the following headwear for boosting Ignore MDef. The notable ones are a high refined mad watchmaker hat, pyramid puzzle, intermission, plus six tears of heaven, evil eye, neon light, plus six monster goals a backpack, 
and plus 6 Lost Star Track. Next for Magic Damage Increase, the notable ones are Quaff, A Small Secret, Starlight Lullaby, and Thunder Taiko. Next for Boosting Percent Magic Attack, the notable ones are High Refined Monocle, plus 10 Evil Eye, Sound of Music, plus 6 Bright Light, the Ancient One Staff, and plus 6 Flower Pistol. And lastly, you may also use any of the following damage to large size and boss monster damage modifiers, which are effective in PvE. As for headwear enchantment, aside from getting high int, luck, or magic attack stats, you should also aim for inside 4th enchant for face and back and arcane 4th enchant for tail. As for headwear cards, these are the ones you can use for improving damage. For PvP, it's better to use the Dark Illusion Star card for reducing fixed cast time. Next, here are some other things that you also need to invest in to further improve your damage output. First, you can obtain these pets which have skills that can boost your magic damage. Second, we have the guild buffs. For guild blessing, you need to max your wise blessing to 200 for boosting magic attack. And then for praying cards, prioritize M-Pen, magic attack, and ignore M-Death for attack cards, and ghost damage for element cards. Third, for Oracle Mirror, you may choose to extract the attack attributes of the following gears, depending on your budget and the stat you're lacking. A high refined stick of wicked thought for increasing M-Pen, a high refined wizardry staff for more ignore M-Death, or a high refined oaf book page 2 for a higher percent magic attack. If you're focusing on PvE, then another option is a high refined Bilgus Arm for extra damage to MVPs and minis. And if for PvP, you can extract a high refined Abre Bow for higher damage to demi-human or Holgrahan's refined hammer for breaking the enemy's weapon and armor. Fourth, you can craft one of the following ancient relics. Light Saint Ring for more magic attack, Valkyrie's Blessing for more ignore and death, Horn of the Watcher for full screen vision of hidden enemies, or Elf Spicolo for reducing VCT to always zero and FCT by 50%. Fifth, unlocking the following multi-job classes will grant bonus attributes. And 6. Invest in lots of magic attack unlock and deposit rewards in your adventure handbook. Depositing the following cards and headwear will also help. Lastly, let's discuss the general battle preparation and skill setup. Before the battle, you can consume the following food buffs which will improve your DPS. Precision stones are not needed since staff type weapons always deal 100% damage to any size. The general skill rotation is to buff yourself first with the following skills. Warm Wind for converting your element to Ghost, Soul Hunting Ritual for increasing damage to large and small size, and Dem Human, Brute, Fish, and Dragon Race. Soul Gathering for increasing Ghost damage, Luck, and Magic damage, and Clairvoyance for treating the enemy's armor as Ghost. Then you can apply debuffs to the enemy with Nihility for reducing the target's M death and Priest Soul for applying Lex Eterna. Afterwards, you can cast your attack skills, mainly S10 then Esma. If there are a large group of mobs, then use S Who to clear them. For survivability, you may cast Soul Walker and Sage's Soul to escape, then sit down or use Play Dead to restore your HP and SP using the Kaina passive. Alright, so far we've discussed the stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, and tips to help you gear up for the deepest build of Soulbinder. Stay tuned for the third and final episode of my Preparing for Soulbinder series as we'll focus more on the support build. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.